This video is brought to you by the Farmer Klein YouTube channel. Be sure to like, subscribe, and comment. Hello everybody and welcome back to another Map First Impressions video. Today we're going to take a look at Nord Farish Marsh. This map can be found over at fedaction-letsplay.de. But before that, this video is brought to you by Terra Farmer and Delilah Paxiron. Thank you for being farm barons. So Nord Frisch Marsh is a 4X map. It is going to be available, as I said, or at fedaction-letsplay.de. There is a link down in the description below. Now, when you go to that website, there are going to be some options. You're going to be able to down the map as you see it here presented. It is the map with ditches, or you could download this map without ditches. Just personal preference, whatever you should so wish to do. This is version 1.1 of this map. This map has been around through multiple iterations of Farm Sim. Farm Sim 17, Farm Sim 19 at the very least, and now Farm Sim 22. In each iteration so far, I have seen this map go through multiple iterations. This is one of those maps that is kind of always an evolving work in progress. So as you see it here is going to be different than possibly if you come back to this map in, let's say, six months. So just be aware, this is kind of a continual work in progress. But what I do expect to see is not necessarily the lay of the land to be different. I expect the map author to be including more and more custom production and other custom aspects to be built into the map. Now, when you also download the map, he has a mods pack that you can download and a production pack that you can download. Neither of those are required for this map, with the exception of the, the mod pack. The mod pack might be required, and we're going to talk about that when we finally get into the map. But the production pack is not required. It's simply a collection of all of the other production mods that he has already produced. Now let's read a little bit of the description before we jump on in. This is a typical North German landscape in North Friesland. We have dikes here, ditches around the fields, and the fields are mostly square. The land was reclaimed from the North Sea by dikes over the course of the last few centuries. There are no prefabricated courtyards, Everyone can creatively design their own courtyard according to their personal preference. There are also a few large spaces available for this. In the map, a few hills, or a few halls, sorry, and a workshop are attached. The map has 79 fields ranging from 0.8 hectares to 95 hectares and everything in between. The average field size is 12.8 hectares and the total area of all fields is just over 1,000 hectares, with 140 of them for grass. There are 150 hectares reserved for forest. There are multiple crop types added to the map in rye, spelt, triticale, and millet. The map also includes sand and gravel, as well as dirt that can be excavated and sold. There are multiple selling points scattered all over the map. There are three custom collectibles also. The map has 10 pairs of pink high heels. That's right. 30 FA gold coins and 78 North Parisian marsh pallets, as the map author describes. Hopefully we're going to be able to find a few of those during our map tour. Now I am going to go ahead and leave the mod pack and the production pack activated for this particular video. Again, as I said, the production pack I don't think is necessarily required, but the mod pack you're going to find possibly useful, especially since the fact that this map includes some custom crop types. Now, if you happen to load this map up in Farm Manager or start from scratch, you will not own any of the land. And the main starting farm that we're going to see is going to be void of all 
buildings, except for a few decorative buildings, which you can indeed sell. Now that we've loaded into the map, let's go ahead and take a look at the PDA. We'll zoom on out and take a look at the lands area. You'll see we start out by owning fields four, five, six, and six also includes the main starting farm. We also have several possible building areas on the map. One is up here to the north, $250,000. I'm likely not going to be able to hit all of them because there are just so many. We will see multiple of these on the flyover. $69,000 for that one. Then there is this area up here for $313,000. Like I said, that is only a sampling. I'm sure there are far more also on this map. Now, with respect to the unbuyable land, you can buy the unbuyable land for $792,000. And in addition to that, there's also some rather interesting things that you can buy on this map. I'm gonna click right here and it's gonna activate four little squares. Those correspond to windmills. We can actually buy the land that the windmills are on. Once we do that, we can sell the decorative windmills. We can either reclaim the land for our own purposes, or we can put down a windmill that is gonna pay us money per hour. So we can take the decorative windmills out and put down some money makers for our own use. Now this map does include two biogas plants, one here to the north, and then one down here to the south. Those happen to be the only production items built into the map. Let's go ahead and look at some of these field prices. Field 78 is $5.3 million. Kind of expensive there. Field 38, on the other hand, is $214,000. Sorry. Field 4, $108,000. Grass pasture 20, $115,000. And then we'll look at field 18 for $73,000. We have all of the standard crop types available to us here on Farm Sim 22. We do have custom crop icons. And in addition to those, we do have those four additional crops in rye, spelt, triticale, and millet. Now, if we take a look here at our crop calendar, we have the generic crop calendar available to us here in Farm Sim 22 on this particular map. And if we look at our prices screen, you're going to see that we have a large abundance of sell points for all of the crops that we can grow here on Farm Sim 22, including the custom crop types. We have the ability to sell all of our animal outputs as well as our hay straw grass. We also have the ability to sell every single production item available on the map. So that is really great to see. Shockingly, we don't see that in every single map like I would think we should. We also have the ability to sell our stones. And like I said, we have custom earth, sorry, pebbles or, or stones and sand on the map that we can dig and sell. Then we have our rye, spelt, triticao, and millet available right there. Take a look at our starting equipment. We start with a decent list of starting equipment. All of it is new, none of it is leased. We have no animals at the start. We do have contracts available to us, and we do not own any production at the start. Now, one thing I do want to show you is the shop here is pretty cool. Inside the shop, it looks like we have kind of some thank you signs for folks that have supported him over the years, which is really cool to see. 
Then on this side, we have some more of that. Open our dealer. So we have our maintenance trigger there. We have a wardrobe trigger located right there. And here you can see what the three custom collectibles look like. On the left, we obviously have our custom high heels. We have our coins on the right. And then we have our little pallets in the middle. That's what we're going to be looking for as far as collectibles on this map. We have our shop trigger. Let's just go ahead and get our Mahindra. We'll just see where it spawns. We're not going to drive around at this point. But I do want to see just where it spawns. And you can see it spawns right over here. Just outside the shop. We've got a modest area for vehicles to spawn in at. Nothing huge. What we do have, it's still adequate, I would think, in order to spawn in a fair bit of items for this 4X map. Now, I'm just going to run right down the road here because our starting farm is literally just down the street from the vehicle shop. And we'll be able to just take a quick look there, talk about our starting equipment. So here we are at the start farm, and let's just go ahead and do a rundown of our starting equipment. In new farmer mode, we start out with the Fent Favorit 515C. We have the Kloss Axion 800 the New Holland CH7.70 Harvester. We have the Rudolph TDK 301 RP Trailer. We have the Verifee 28-foot Grain Header to go with our New Holland CH7.70. We have the POV5 XL Agramaz Plow. The Sam... Sar uh, we'll just go with the Lemkin 9500K. As far as Cedars go, we have the Terrasim c 6 F Cedar. We have the Hardy Mega 1200L Fertilizer and Herbicide Sprayer. We have the ZATS 3200 Amazon Fertilize Spreader. Then we have the Kuhn GM D21, or sorry, 3123F Front Mower and the GMD 4411 Rear Side Mower. We have the Samez Z2840H Wind Rower. Forge Wagon. We have the Pottinger Faro 4010D. We have a header trailer for our grain header and a pair of front weights. Now, on the main farm here, we can indeed sell everything we want. So if we go here to the build mode and we can come over here and we can sell the easy sheds. We can sell our shed located right there. We can sell our main farm silo and we can sell our three decorative buildings. So there are three buildings here, one on either side of the workshop that are simply decorative. And then we can sell the workshop itself. Everything you see here will go away. So all of the decorative bits in front of the building and the main building itself. So we do have our Una default farm silo. We have our dump station and our fill pipe. We have a pair of easy sheds, as we saw. And then the rest of our machinery is located inside of here. Now let's go ahead and take a look at one of the collectibles. So this is what the gold coin is going to look like right there and if we are lucky we will run across one of the cases of or one of the little pallets also during our drive around 
Now I do want to take a look at build mode because we do have some custom buildings included with the map. We've got a buildings scrolling over. We have several custom buildings that we can place down. Most of these are old style texture buildings, but they are available for you to place should you so wish. Ones with solar panels will provide you a little bit of income per hour. The income figures that you are seeing is based on easy mode because we are just loading up in new farmer and have not changed the economic difficulty. Now, if you load up the mod pack, you will get some custom silos. And the reason this is important is because these are multi silos and you're going to likely want to put one of these down if you are going to use one of the additional crops because you're likely not going to be able to store the additional new crops in the default game silo that is pre-placed. Okay, silo extensions. We also have some custom silo extensions with that mod pack. We have a custom herbicide station and lime station also with that pack. And then we have the workstation, which is located right here. That is available with the map. And then a cell wood trigger located under tools. Under farmhouses, we have the base game trailer that we can put down. And then if you happen to also have downloaded his production pack, also included in the map is a, a fertilizer factory. Right there. Then we have a silage factory. And some of these we've already done mod reviews to talk about their functionality. Feed factory, a seed production factory, and then a fuel factory located right there there are no custom cell points greenhouses orchards but under generators there is a custom decorative windmill this is the same windmill we're going to find on the map it gives you no money per hour you can buy it for one dollar or you can put down a large money making windmill for 1.2 million dollars and it's going to net you 1900 and $19,000, sorry, per month. There are no custom animals on the map and no custom decorative bits. But if we do get to landscaping, there are a fair bit of textures. Let's just go ahead and lay some of those down just to demonstrate for you. We have animal mud, asphalt, sand, or should I say wet sand, cobblestone, Concrete, asphalt too, which is the texture of what we already have down here on the ground. Dirt, another dirt, forest ground, second forest ground, grass, dry grass, gravel. And here we have some tile, textured concrete, some more textured concrete. We've got some stones, some other dirt, and then some water. Let's go ahead and take a look at those. So here we have our animal dirt. Definitely using the new texture technique. Get that really, really interesting 3d look we have our asphalt our wet sand cobblestone definitely using that 3d appearance we have our concrete our other asphalt and this one this one really does have an interesting 3d grippy look to it dirt second dirt forest floor second forest floor again with that kind of 3d appearance going on there grass grass 
gravel. Then we have that tiled, the textured concrete. Some other textured concrete. We've got that kind of wet gravel going on there. Some mud and then like a placeable water or a paintable water texture right there. So those are all of the custom ground textures also that are built into the map. And with that, we're going to go ahead and get set up for the fly around. We're going to fly around the map and just take a look at the decorative elements from above. Take a look at the various build modes or build areas where you can put down your own production points should you wish. Or if you wish to play this map with multiple players, there's also areas for you to build out multiple farms. Then we're going to come back to the shop, grab our Mahindra, and drive around to all the cell points and other points of interest. Go ahead and get a little bit of altitude. And as I said in the intro, all of the windmills that you are seeing here on the map, they are all sellable. And you can put down your own money-making windmill there, should you so wish. Or you can clear the land and just make use of the land however you should also wish to do so. As you can see, the map is fairly flat aside from the dikes that are around or the water trenches that are around most of the fields. And that is, as the description said, because most or if not all of this land was reclaimed from the sea over a couple centuries of time. So here we have the main farm. Then again, we have our three starting fields located right here. We have field four, field five, and field six. So since the shop is right there, I'm just going to go ahead and kind of go in a clockwise direction. And here we have one of those areas that you can place something at. It also has a little bit of an exercise area for your horses. Possibly in a future map update, we might see a custom horse area there. We have one of our cell points located right there. As I said, if these ditches are not something that you are looking forward to using or seeing on the map. You can download the non-ditch version and it is available on the same website that is linked in the description below. We have one of the placeable areas there that you could use to place down a factory or whatnot. These buildings are sellable. Once you own the land, you will be able to sell those buildings. Those are a pair of the same kind of decorative buildings that we saw in our um, on our base farm. Just over this tree line, we have the area that we can dig the gravel, the dirt, and the stone or the sand from. So here we have those fill types. So you can come in here with a bucket. Scoop up a big old trailer load of sand and sell it. We have our gravel located right there. And then we just have some earth or some dirt located right there that we could dig up and sell for ourselves, should we so wish. Make your way over Big Field 54, which is 83 acres in size. Coming down here to another set of cell points. As well as a fuel station. Those five windmills are also sellable and clearable. Here is a big placeable area that is wrapped between fields 60, 61, and 62. 
these two sheds once again they can be sold now what cannot be sold is this here this large building here these cars this garage and these decorative elements here we have one of those pallets that I was saying one of those collectible pallets is located right there now, I looked all around this map before I started recording the video and I didn't wasn't able to find any of the pink high heels I feel a little bit down that I wasn't able to locate any of those but at any rate there are apparently 10 of those scattered around the map let me know down in the description below if you have managed to find any of them or all of them we have another set of possible areas for you to build a production element down or have a secondary farm or a second farm player having a secondary farm The Southern BGA is directly ahead. The biogas plants are viable. And you'll notice that the land does not include silage bunkers. You will be able to buy the land and put your own silage bunker down should you so wish. We have kind of two islands out here. You will access via bridges, one located right here with several fields in it, and then one to the north with three very large fields, and then a grass pasture also. You see below us, we have three possible building areas, one to the left, one in the middle, and one to the right. They are kind of already set up to be kind of production areas because they have kind of cars, a parking lot set up, and such. So let's talk about our rating system. The first rating is production built in, or does the map have areas set aside for such? I'm going to say yes. We're going to get a full point on that regard. Here we have the northern biogas plant. There are two biogas plants that are embedded with the map. And then there are plenty of possible placeable areas that you can buy and either put down your own farm or put down production areas. So here we have those three windmills that I mentioned earlier. I want to go ahead and buy that land and just demonstrate what we can do here. So we're right up here. I'm gonna go ahead and buy this land for $36,000. Now that I've done that, I can go into build mode and I can come over here and sell the windmill and I can sell all of them if I wish. At that point, I could expand the field out here to the road and just gain some additional farmland or I could go here and go to generators and I could put my own generator down if I wanted in its place and then start earning $19,200 per hour so you know we could start small and put down our little little wind energy converter and make a little bit of money as we kind of progress up the bank account. So I think that's a pretty cool idea. I like that idea of being able to sell various decorative elements around the map and then be able to put your own maybe money-making variants of those down as you gain the bank account balance and can continue your progression in your gameplay. Two more of those areas where you can either build out a farm or build out production directly below there you can see two more of those off in the distance 
Those are the ones with those two sellable buildings. Do have traffic on the map, as you can see down there below. And at this point, I'm going to make my way back to the shop so we can jump in that Mahindra and then finally do our drive around. We'll take a look at all the cell points as well as other key aspects of the map. Now, if we talk about some of our other ratings, this map include cell points for all of the base game props. Yes, this map includes the ability to sell all of our animal outputs. Yes. Can we sell all of our production elements? Yes. So we're going to get a full 1.0 on that regard also. Can the farms be customized? Yes. So on the main starting farm, we can sell all of the pre-placed buildings, including three of the decorative buildings. And then we also will have plenty of space to put down our own sheds and whatnot. So the map is gonna get a full point on that regard also. into our first dump station. Then we have a second cell point, a very, very small cell point. Let's go ahead and check to see what the heck is this thing? What is this all about? So we have that one, that cell point. I'm not going to try to try to figure out how to pronounce that particular cell point. Go ahead and scroll on down and see what that one might happen to. That's so going to take seed and sell seed there. And let me see real fast. Let's jump down here. We can sell solid fertilizer there. Oh, this is buy point. Sorry, this is a buy point. I can buy lime, solid fertilizer, mineral feed, road salt, seed. So I can buy product here. Okay, there we go. We're going to be able to buy our liquid fertilizer and our herbicide, no doubt. We have our cell point located right here to sell our grain and such. Watch out that the traffic. Now we just drove over some train tracks. These train tracks are decorative only. There isn't a drivable or a rideable train. Now here we have another nice little interesting aspect of the map. We have a fuel station. So of course we have our fuel right there, but we also have methane pumps located right here. And we have energy or charging stations for our electric vehicles located also right here. So this is Kind of the everything you need to refill your station. Station. I'm going to go ahead and make my way back down to the south. We'll hit the few cell points that are to the south and then we'll come back up to the north. You will see that this map does include utility poles along the fields and sometimes in the fields. These poles do not have collisions. 
So you won't have to worry about collisions with these particular poles. You'll just be able to drive right on through them. That means they will be invisible to hired helpers also. I know that can be a key sticking point for some players as to if those do or do not have collisions, depending on kind of your all general mindset. Here we have the Southern BGA. And it can be acquired for $1.5 million. Once you acquire it, you'll be able to then put down your silage bunkers or other buildings. Now that first cell point that we looked at, there wasn't a floating icon to represent the dump station. So we're gonna need to keep an eye out as to if there are other cell points like that and figure out how that might come into play with respect to are the triggers and interactive areas clearly marked. So here we have a cell point for our silage hay straw and grass. And then around the back, we have a large opening where we could put our own industrial complex down. So that's nice to see. Go ahead and check out the next cell point, which is a log cell point. So we have our dump station for our logs. We have the wood cell trigger located right there. This map does not have a viable sawmill. You can, of course, put one down should you so wish. Gonna make my way down here to the production that is Love Field 65. gas plant another possible building farm area small meadow 20 Pardon me while I drive through a trench. Got another building zone. Uh, field 64. Some of those are set up with fences, some with little walls. Here we have between field 64 and 65. Another build area. This one with a large shed attached. It 
like I said, this map is likely going to be a continued work in progress. Which is perfectly fine. You can download the map and play it as it is. If you come back to the map in six months, it will likely be a bit different than we have seen today. I typically do not do follow-up videos of maps. I will from occasion, but it is not something I typically will do. I don't expect this map to change drastically from one iteration to the next. I really expect it to be an additive process where the only thing that's probably going to get added to the map are custom production points and some other things. So one of our coins is located right there. Do a little in cab driving as we make our way around and up this one island. And then we'll hit the various cell points to the north. I think this map has a lot of gameplay potential for sure. It is a 4X map, so there is a whole lot of land to farm. As the description said, over a thousand farmable hectares worth of land. 150 hectares of forestry, like you can see the forest in front of us, and 140 hectares of grasslands also. So close to 1,300 total hectares of usable kind of farming land. We have our forest in there. Plenty of decorative bits going on. We've got the forest floor, the ground, the grass. Sorry, we got bushes, kind of wildflowers, and everything. Overall, looks quite nice. Entrances into fields are fairly good. Fairly wide bridge into here. I don't think you're going to have too much trouble bringing large machinery in here. The items that are immediately beside the roads appear to be collision free for the most part. Other than our box right there, right? concept of these sellable windmills is a really interesting concept as I've said a lot of areas a lot of areas where you can put down production on the map. Overall, it's running fairly well as far as performance wise goes. We've had a few little hitches here and there, likely as a result of texture streaming. So, your performances will vary, of course, depending on how fast the hard drive is textures are coming out of, size of memory of your graphics card, and the like. Now, also looks like we have possibly diggable dirt here along and under the water, not just over at that one area just south of field 53. We 
is a good example of one of those areas that have been enclosed with a little wall. down here to this particular cell point so we have a dump icon located right here with our hashes now as far as the building textures go I would say this that's where this map is going to fall a little bit in the ratings many of the buildings on this map are not visually taking advantage of the new texturing technique the three decorative buildings including the workshop trigger at the main farm is is using some lower res textures specifically that really do stand out in fact on that building there are some lights that are attached to that building that are much higher text resolution than the building itself and as a result of that well it's just it, they just really really stand out so we've already been here Took a right turn. I believe last time. Turn on in here at kind of the supermarket and the dump station right there come around the back we have another cell point right there we want to avoid all of our pedestrians walking in a lane a decorative garden going on here park straight on into a little meadow I mean the map has got tons of decorative bits tons of houses yards rather complex road network aimlessly walking the streets where are you all going the world may never know we have another dump station overall it in there car like you're turning around that was kind of neat
So we have our northern BGA. Located right here. And that can also be purchased for a cool 1.5 million dollars. Sneak out this way. Another set of cell points located right here. Cell point for hay straw, grass, and silage, no doubt. I think it's around front, actually. Oh, not around front. Okay, our scale and our rear dump station. Now, while these dump stations are fairly obvious, I would like to have seen the floating dump icon over them since we do have that now as a game feature. So I will need to, I feel, knock off a little bit on the scoring with respect to not having those clearly marked. The player can turn those off in the game options. So I like to see them on. And then if the player wants to turn them off, they can then cycle them off if they should so wish. It's all about giving players options so we have our fuel station right here and again a methane station Let's see do we have an electric charging station at this fuel depot I'm not seeing one but we did have one at the other gas station that was nice to see. Let's make our way back to the southern part of the map. Four X maps take a little while to drive around, especially when they have cell points scattered around so much. While the fields themselves are flat, we do have some some variations in terrain with the ditches and with these kind of elevated roads. To give you a little bit of kind of variability. sure where these guys are going to, but hey. Got a dump station right there. Dump station right here. Again, with, without the... Ideally, without the, the floating icons, I'd like to see those show up. So, I think overall, we're going to give the map a, a 0.5. I feel there's a lot of these dump stations that aren't marked so is it is it ultimately half of the cell points that are not marked I don't know I'm not doing a, an exact counting but uh, I do feel that it's a fair number of them so I want to go ahead and 
kind of state that. So I think we'll give it a, a .5 with regard to having the player triggers in interactive areas clearly marked. So that puts the total score of this map at four out of five. So let's just do a run through real fast as we hit the, the final three areas of interest. The map is gonna get a full point with regard to the two BGAs being built in and the abundance of placeable areas set aside for either the placement of farms or production. We're also gonna give it a full point with respect to the ability to sell all the base game crops, the additional crops that are on the map, as well as the animal outputs and production outputs. Fuel depot right here, large fuel depot. Methane fueling areas. We're also gonna give it a full point with respect to can the fields be customized? They can indeed. Our farms be customized. They can indeed be customized. And then we're going to give it a half point for both the buildings not using the newest technique across the board. There's probably a good, probably more than half of the buildings on the map are not, they're not, they're not low texture but they're not using the newest texture technique. And that's just a, that's not really that big of a deal, but it is something that is part of the criteria. And then we're gonna give it a half point with respect to having player triggers not as clearly marked as they could be. Let me know down in the description below, what do you all think of this particular map? Is it a map that you are going to be downloading and giving a try? Or are you maybe going to come back to it later and see how it has progressed over time? Because I have no doubt this map will be continued to be updated and add more and more probably production features to the map and further refine it from a gameplay standpoint. And until next time, Happy farming.